Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to this daily science fiction extravaganza, commonly known as Tales, Tales from Out from space. Out, space, out, space. Out, space. Taken from the subreddit HFY. All the relevant links will be down below. And, as always, I hope that you enjoy. And if you do, please consider supporting the channel. On to the science fiction. Story number one. Humans are weird. Pepper. Written by Betty Adams. Who, in the flying flip, keeps hiding the pepper? Mac Dodge snarled as he slammed the salt shaker onto the counter by the heating surface. Flying flip, another human asked with a grin from where he was sat eating a bowl of oatmeal at the table. Headquarters says I need to share less cultural knowledge with the base. Max says, rolling his eyes as he brought the plate of scrambled eggs to the table. The dull grey wall of the makeshift kitchen crowded in over their heads. The undulates were given the humans the largest storage bay on their base for this common space, but the bread box sized aliens had never built the structure for the two meter tall bipeds in mind. Mac sighed at his salted eggs. Seriously, Bob, he said, this is the third day running that the pepper has been missing. Eat oatmeal instead, Bob suggested with a grin. Mac glared at him. Helping, Bob said in a sing-song voice. Yesterday, I found it in storage bay six, Mac continued as Bob returned to his oatmeal. The day before that, I found it in the lost and found box in the security desk. Well, I never touched the stuff, Bob pointed out. Can't blame me. Well, there are only seven humans on this base, Mac observed. The pool of suspects is pretty small. There are forty-odd undulates on this base, however, Bob said. What would they want with our pamper? Mac asked. Capsaicin isn't technically a poison for them, but they don't go in for the painful food. The conversation was interrupted by a chime that announced that the arrival of one of their hosts. Mac and Bob turned to glance at the small opening of the door that served the undulates. The dusky red undulate came in and waved his gripping appendages cheerfully at them. And what motile dust mop graces us with his presence today? Bob asked cheerfully. Mac winced at the sheer number of diplomatic regulations that question broke, and not for the first time thanked the heavens that the Angelates were so enthusiastic and forgiving. I am spins madly, the Angelate replied. His tones were flat with effort. He had clearly learned human grammar, but still was struggling with the emotional expression. However, from the way his motile appendages jumped around him and the undulate was excited or agitated. I am the quartermaster for the station and... The undulate hesitated and the humans gave him time to work out his words. I believe the proper translation is station safety officer. Why, hello then, spins madly, Bob said, giving a wave. How can we help you? There has been a safety violation in the space for three days running, Spins madly said, arcing his gripping appendages in a gesture that indicated either frustration or perplexity. Really now? Bob asked, with his grin spreading. What violation is that? I found raw ingredients for a non-lethal defense canister next to the heating surface for food preparation, Spins madly said. And you moved it to a safer location? Mac asked with a groan. Spins madly, still thoughtfully, and then quickly scrambled to align himself towards the object of his attention, clearly remembering that humans are an aiming species. Bob burst out laughing, have fun explaining why some humans eat pepper when the smart ones use it for a weapon. Bob said as he picked up his bowl and left the table. You eat raw capsaicin? Spins madly asked Mac. Mac tried not to laugh at how the courtmaster remembered halfway through the sentence to add tones of astonishment. It is called pepper, and we eat, dry it, and eat it, he said with a sigh. This was going to be fun. End of chapter. Story number two. Humans are weird, working through it. Written by Betty Adams. Just attach the replacement sensor, and we'll be on our way, 16th sister said as she examined the data in front of her. Her human partner gave a grunt in reply that she had come to learn meant confirmation to her order. He ambled over to the sensor tower at the edge of her perception, and Sixteenth Sister tilted her head to absorb the atmosphere. Her frill flicked with unease, and her antenna curled a little tighter. She did not like being this exposed. The thick ground cover spread out from the open transport in every direction. The rustling foliage blended in with the sky completing the pod. 
but it was so big, so far. Sixteen's sister clamped her frill on her neck and drew in a deep breath. Brother Unicus assured her that the humans could see for kilometers in clear air, that the joining of the sky and the flat land was not so much a pod but a great dome. He said that he loved the sensation. He called it the big sky country. Her thoughts returned to her partner as something made an alarming clacking sound. Brother Unicus, she asked, is the assembly going well? Yeah, no, Brother Unicus said. Before Sixteen's sister could ask for clarification, Brother Unicus snapped out of profanity and dropped the censer. Are you injured, Brother Unicus? Sixteen's sister demanded, leaping out of the transport and dropping her data pad onto the seat. Not exactly, Brother Unicus said as he attempted to flex one of his hands. Your hand? Sixteen's sister clicked in shock. Yeah, Brother Unicus muttered, glancing to the side. It's twice the size of your other hand, Sixteen's sister said. I got stung, Brother Unicus stated. When did the sting occur? Sixteen sister demanded. Hold a moment, I'll get the first aid kit and the data pad. It's not a big deal, Brother Unicus assured her. It happens, I don't react bad to that species. When did the sting occur? Sixteen sister asked again as she pulled up a medical report form. About eight o'clock this morning, Brother Unicus stated. Her frill snapped out and Sixteen's sister tilted her head to focus on her partner. Even experiencing this reaction, she observed slowly for nearly six hours. Well, it's a slow to get started, Brother Unicus said with a shrug. Didn't get bad till about an hour back. Get in the transport, Sixteen's sister said, barely able to keep her voice in a low human ranges. We gotta finish, Brother Unicus pointed at the half-disassembled sensor network. Sixteenth sister bent to snatch the fallen sensor up and stalked up to the human. She arched her legs, flared her thrill, and extended her antennae. Even at full extension, her antennae tips barely reached his chin. I am the senior ranger, she said. Get in the transport and begin filling out the injury report. But, brother Unicus said, Survey call, ranger Stephen Cole, she snapped. You will follow medical protocol. At the sound of his full designation, Brother Unicus twitched and grabbed the data pad and scurried towards the transport. Sixteenth sister sighed and quickly put the sensor tower into standby mode. She leapt into the transport and activated the engines. What were you thinking? she demanded. I figured if I didn't get too bad, I could work through it, Brother Unicus said. Sixteenth sister curled her antenna at him sternly. Medical report, she snapped. Now... End of chapter. Story number three. Humans are weird. Candles. Written by Betty Adams. When 45 Trills flew into the base security office, he was not expecting to see the current security officer pointedly ignoring the fire alarm. Officer 77 clicks, 45 Trills demanded. There is a fire in the humans' compartment of the base. I am aware, the officer waved his statement away with a flick of his wing without lifting his eyes from the readout of the exterior fences. Well, 45 trolls demanded. The officer nudged the data pad with his wing claw and returned to his perusal of the readouts. 45 trolls picked up the data pad and activated it. The text scrolled slowly across the screen. It is a candle. The human in the room is using it to meditate. Staring at the flame is supposed to help the human clear her mind. It'll not affect the oxygen balance of the base. I have gotten the human to sign a document saying that she will not leave the open flame unattended. If any further action is required, some other deluded sap can waste their breath arguing with the human. Forty-five trolls wrinkled his brow in irritation. He had been warned that prolonged exposure to humans was detrimental to protocol, but this was the first personal experience with it. He sighed and shifted his wings back. The candle flame wasn't really a threat, but it was also unnecessary. Forty-five trolls weighed the trouble with confronting the human against the danger of setting the precedence of letting candles burn. You really don't want to... 77 clicks said, seeming to sound his steps without even looking at him. 45 trills sighed again. Yeah, it was probably right. End of story. Story number four. Humans are weird. Contagious behavior. Written by Betty Adams. The humans are a terrible influence on the undulates. 47 clicks spat out as he fluttered to a landing next to Kultuchst. 
A really cool twitch danced as he adjusted his foot coverings over the locomotion legs for the fifth time that day. I hadn't noticed. The halberd glared at him through narrow eyes. How can you not have noticed? 47 clicks hissed. I know for a fact that those contraptions are for keeping that surfacant off your skin. Exoskeleton, Zkultrich corrected him. I was attempting to use sarcasm. Oh, please don't, groaned the halbat. I don't think I can stand any more human madness spreading to other species today. Kultich didn't bother apologizing. Both he and his colleague were all too aware of the general rule that strongly dissuaded them from actively dis- discouraging play between the species after work, and there was no doubt that the humans and the undulates were having a blast playing with the new toy the humans had introduced. I'm going out to observe the situation, Kultich stated grimly. Do you wish to assist me? There is no way, 47 clicks hissed. Then I am going out there until this is over. You landbound folk cannot understand. Kultch whistled for a moment while he could roll his eyes. Having eight of them would no doubt make the gesture even more meaningful, but satisfied himself by bristling his hair and stalking out. It was a fairly long walk to his office to the ponds where the undulates and the humans re- recreated. But long before he got there, his foot coverings were serving their purpose as he avoided the sticky patches on the ground. He flinched back as his eyes caught the magnified, the glistening bubble that floated over his head. But he soldiered on gamely. Soon the sound of laughing and trilling met his ears, and he hurried forward to the safe tree that had been set up near the ponds for his use. The grips were mostly sticky with the residue from the human's game, but he managed to find a secure perch as he observed the game in progress. A few of the humans stood at one end of the pond, using a directional force of the mammalian lungs to blow atmosphere through with soap-covered loops. This formed bubbles that drifted on the wind over the pond. In the water, the majority of the undulates were frisking about at their maximum speed, chasing the bubbles. A few undulates had to take the bubbles once to give vigorously waving them over their bodies in an attempt to form bubbles. The crowd rumbled with every known sign of delight and pleasure for the two species. Kult shuddered and crept closer to the trunk of the tree as one of the bubbles drifted close to him. He saw his own eight eyes reflected on the opulescent close that brought the urge to plead panic. Understanding the differences is why I'm here instead of with my home swarm. He reminded himself firmly, the humans are enjoying themselves and I will figure out why. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this dose of science fiction fun. I hope that you enjoyed. And if you did, please don't forget to support the author from the link down below. But if you want to support this channel, there are links as well down below for you to help with. But the easiest way would be to share this video. And if you are so inclined, subscribe as well. I will see you all in the next episode, and I hope that you all have a fantastic time until then. Cheers.